and welcome to Cochrane Muskrat. We're with Brenda. I'm Brenda and we're here today to give you another playing with traditional blocks. This one is called the Star and its Shadow. Now this is just such a pretty little block to work with. It comes out at eight and a half inches and it's just cute and you can do it scrappy as well. It looks great. But first before we do the sewing, yes we always have a shout out for you. And today it's Donald from and from Donald Mulders. Now he is doing, um, he was doing a series called Taming Mount Scrapmore. I would love it if you guys would go over there and, you know, give hit his su subscribe. Tell him that Brenda from Conquering Mount Scrapmore gave him a shout out. And we'll have some fun with the taming of Mount Scrapmore and the conquering of Mount Scrapmore. It'll be a lot of fun for him too. He's not expecting this shout out, so this is all good. We also, in the show notes, we're going to have Donald's YouTube channel link. We also have our Facebook group link where we're, you know, joining together as members, sharing pictures of what we're working on, and also we're making use of the virtual rooms. There's a lady now doing a um, what do you call it? One of those scrap exchanges or fabric exchanges. It's up in the featured part there. She's organizing that for us with my blessing. I don't want to have anything to do with it, but she's doing it. And the other thing is going to be the Zoom link for our monthly sew date. So from now until the end of this December, there's going to be a sew date listed in that show notes below, right? So we, you can come sit and sew with us. And there's a bunch of us that gather and we work on stuff that inspires you, not what I've shown you, right? So if you don't have anything on, on the go, bring your crochet hanger or your cross stitch or whatever. It's all fine. It's a place to gather and chat and have fun. And if you're shy and you just want to listen, that's okay too. So <laughs> we also are asking you to share, like, and subscribe our channel. Over half of you, our analytics are showing us that over half of you aren't subscribed to us. So if you could do that for us, that would be great. So come on in, let's get to the sewing on this beautiful little block. Okay, we're here with the star and the star in its shadow. The first thing we're going to do, now I kind of finger press these flip and stitch and we're going to do those first because that's usually the hardest part for people to get. And I'm just, like I put a little finger press in them. So I'm going to try and stay on the outside of the line. Yep, that's it. We're breaking it down and doing the hardest bit first. So there. And I'm doing them all the same. Now... This marble scrap, I didn't have a lot of this marble scrap, but it is uh, two and a half inches. It's kind of, it's kind of nice to work with. And uh, you guys wanted patterns with, you know, a two and a half inch strips or two and a half inch squares. And you could do this scrappy if you'd like. I, um, now, if you notice, I cut these out of that, uh, that uh, easy triangle ruler. So this works out so well for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now, run the last one through. Am I running that through in the right? Oh, let's stop right now. Let's stop where we're at right now. We'll stop because I think I might have sewn it on wrong. So, because it went in the machine at a different angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull the threads out. There. And it's got to go. All the other ones got sewn this way, so this one has to get sewn this way. So you see that? I was sewing it the wrong way, so I need it to go this way. There we go. Now I'll hold on my threads. There we go. Just fix it. Fix it before you have to. It's a good thing I saw that right away. So. As with all of these, you're going to take them, you're going to fold it over. You haven't, you haven't uh, clipped it yet or nothing. Make sure that you've got coverage because you don't want your block not to be fully covered. There we are. Yes, that works. And just lovely. There we go. Now I'm going to change the foot on this right away because we don't need that foot. We need the quarter inch foot because we're going to run our triangles through right away. 
So if I get all of this, and I can clip it, hang on. Oops, <laughs> not good. There. Okay, let's just run a, now see both of these are cut like this. And when you use that easy angle triangle ruler, you can cut out of strips. This is a two and a half inch strip that I cut these out of. So there, now we're just gonna do this. Yes, I have good coverage. Let's line them all up. Let's line them all back. There we go. <laughs> there. There we go. Yeah, this is such a pretty, pretty star to do scrappy, you know. This one's always, I love, always makes such lovely quilts. It kind of reminds me of that um, ribbon block, in a way, that people make. And they put several rounds of this type of thing together. There we go. Let's lay that all out. Okay, let's get all these sewn. And here we go. So I'm running the, the flattened end through first, just so you guys see how this is done. If you are on a sewing machine where you have a mouth instead of a hole, and I'll show you this in a sec. Like my machine, because it's vintage and has no zigzag attachment on it at present, I have just a tiny bit of hole. And all of that goes through. Now, I wonder, I'm just gonna run one of these through. I'm just gonna quickly run these bonus ones through. Just because I can, the flip and stitch. Uh, little triangles or bonus triangles. They don't, they don't form a part of the block, but I can make a cute little pinwheel out of them and then trim it down the size. It'd be nice. This is about not wasting your supplies, you know. Okay, so here is that hole I was talking about. I'm just gonna take this foot off. Now, I don't hope you can see this. All I have here is a little hole, a tiny little hole. Now, if I, if my, uh, so I don't worry about sending my triangles through, you know, on the point because I, you know, they don't sink down the hole because it's a pretty tiny little hole for that thing to sink down. But where there's a mouth, where there's a wider space, it kind of looks like a mouth sometimes, you know. You have to kind of watch your triangles, right? Your tips don't go in deep into your machine because you can have, it just, this is where people get annoyed with their machines. That they're like, oh gosh, they just make such a mess. So we're pressing out of the dark, which in this case is that pink violet. Okay, there we go. Now, just like that, we're gonna put these back in. Oops, back in, just like that. Okay. Oops, like that, and like that. Oops. No, 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 it's like this, there. Yeah. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Right? It's kind of a silhouette of a Lemoyne star, but it's not like a Lemoyne star. It's a very different little little thing. So the next hard bit is to line up all of this. And I I just put them down and I roll through. I'm just gonna clip off that leader ender. And I try and roll them through all the same way, because basically they are all the same unit. They're just pivoted. And this is not picking up, why? There we go. So this, okay. Basically what I'm doing is I'm putting the bulky end of the triangle through the machine first. And if I do that on all four on this block, they all come out the same, right? long tail out of there. So this goes with this. And this 
Okay, it goes with this. Here, with this. Okay. Just put it back together. And I, I would do this too if I was doing a big, you know, a big bunch of them, right? Like I would take them and, you know, make sure that I had them all trimmed, you know, going the same way. Like I would do a big stack because it's a subunit. Basically, you're putting a half square triangle to a, you know, a full square and sewing it to, sewing them all the same way. If you're doing a big quilt, that's an efficiency in quilting that, you know, people get. So now with this little pinwheel that we're going to make, press to the dark on all of it. Here we go. Kind of put your blues across from each other and your uni yellows across from each other. There. And now we're going to line up the stars and we're going to line up the bottom. Oops, that's wrong. This, this way just like that and we're going to make sure that that bottom lines up because we're trimming around it and I will here we go so we get the last one of those, those subunits off there we go just like that now the next thing to do on this block is to sew these two pieces together. And you're going to sew them all the same way as well. So you line them up, put them together, just like that. There we go. And make a nice little. There we go. take long. It does not take long for, for this one to do. Oops, we're going this away. So they all look the same. And the last bit is right here. Line it up. Just a little out of a line. There we go. Now this little leader ender, one goes up, the other one goes down, one seam. And you match up your centers, you run it through your sewing machine. Oops. Put my... Okay, so now this all opens up just like so. So you've got it all like this. And you're going to press to the dark, so all the dark is on top, and you're going to lay it out. Just like that. There we go. And you worked your way around. I decided today I'm working counterclockwise, but, you know, you, if, if you're a clockwise person, that's good. So you point all the blue to the center, and now you're going to run it through just like a four patch. Just like an oversized four pack. This block finishes at eight inches in a quilt, eight and a half in inch, inches unfinished. And it is such a pretty little block to do. Okay. And I do mix my batiks and prints. So, in case you're wondering, I don't have. I'm not one of these people that does batiks must go with batiks, so I don't do that. So with this thing, I'm going to show you this. I just pull it apart just a little bit like that. So now, all of this swirls. So that's my little scrap, and I'm going to take it, and I'm probably going to size it down, trim it down to two and a half, so it's a usable size for me, right? Okay, I'm going to run another back to running leader enders through. Because I have hundreds of them. <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of these little leader enders. And I figure, okay, we might as well get them one through and be done. Okay. Now, this. Okay. 
this is what your block looks like. So this one goes up. This one goes down. Just because you would do them all the same. If you were doing a big stack of them, you would make sure they all twirl the same way. Okay. Now I'm going to cut that twirling piece because I have my needle down right now. So I'm going to take this and hold on to it. Make sure I get a nice tight mass in the center, even though these are all the same piece of fabric. I want them to nest. And there we go. Nice. Everything's lining up. Wow. Okay. And another leader ender. take our back we give it a pull it apart like so just like that we're twi twisting our seams open so now this thing is going to lie flat when you do this you're going to take your ironing board of course you know give it a good press and now we get to our big to da moment so here's our eight and a half inch unfinished star in its shadow i don't think Pink, stars really have pink shadows, but this works. It, it's kind of a cute. I didn't believe I still had this beautiful batik kicking around. And yes, I make my mix up my batiks and my prints. It's, it's all good. I decided on the same piece of white fabric because I had enough of it. And it was a full piece of scrap going out, white scrap going out of my scrap bin. So that was pretty cool. I also ended up with a bonus pinwheel that I'm going to trim down to two and a half. And once I give it a good press, all of the seams in the back spin the, the right way, the same way. So this will lie really flat in a quilt. So that's going to be a cute little filler block. So I do hope you give this, this one a try. <laughs> this was a lot of fun to make. And even though it looks complicated, it's not. It kind of reminds you of that tulip block. Like when you just go like this. The tulip block we made earlier, except we're missing that little square right here. So, like I say, I hope you give it a try. And I hope you have an absolutely wonderful week ahead and everything goes right for you in your sewing room and, and in your life. Okay, so take care and stay well until then. Bye! My husband and I would love to thank you for all of the amazing people that we have met along this crazy YouTube adventure that we've been having. Uh, we do free speaking engagements too. So if you're part of a guild and they're looking for, you know, people to talk and, you know, and chat with, you know, in their uh, monthly meetings, tell them that I'm doing free ones just to help the guilds out because it's been a tough time for the guilds as well. You know, share, like, and subscribe with your friends, you know, make sure that they're you know, they, they, they get the word out on us. That's, I mean, that's the best way you can do to help us out. So until we meet again, I want to thank you. Okay. Goodbye.